Okay then gang, so we've seen now how to set up a very, very basic app using the Material app as our root widget right here. And it acts as a wrapper for the rest of our app. Now inside it we have this home property which remember specifies what is going to be on the home screen when we load this app. And inside that at the minute we just declare a single text widget which says hey ninjas and we see it over here looking rather ugly. So this is all a bit boring at the minute and gradually what we want to do is add more content to this screen to make it look a bit better. So to do that, the first thing we're going to explore is a widget called the scaffold widget. Now, the scaffold widget is going to allow us to implement a basic layout for our app. It's going to allow us to set up an app bar at the top, uh, some floating action buttons if we want, and more. So what we're going to do is actually delete this text widget for now. And we're saying now the home property should be a scaffold widget. And by the way, all these widgets come built into the Flutter SDK out of the box. We can build our own widgets later, our own custom ones, but these ones come out of the box that we can use. So anyway, this scaffold widget is going to take a multitude of different properties so we can specify different things about the base layout of our app. The first thing I'm going to do inside this is an app bar property. So app bar like that. And this app bar property is going to specify how our app bar is going to look at the top. Now, the value of this property is actually just going to be another inbuilt widget, which is called app bar like so. And notice the convention. Our widgets are all starting with a capital letter and each new word starts with a capital letter as well. That's the convention of these widgets. So inside the scaffold, we now have the app bar property and the value of that property is an app bar widget. Now, remember, I said put a comma after every value of every property. So let's put a comma there and also a comma after scaffold as well, just in case we add more properties down here later on. OK, then. So inside the app bar, we can also specify a couple of properties. And this is the general pattern here. We have a property with a value, which is sometimes a widget. And inside that widget, we can have more properties. And sometimes the values of those properties are widgets. And inside those widgets, we can have more properties and so forth because we're nesting widgets within widgets. Remember that widget tree structure I showed you in one of the first slides. And that's basically what we're doing here programmatically, creating a widget tree. And each widget has different properties. So the first property of this app bar is going to be the title property. And this is going to say what is actually shown, what text is shown on the title of the app bar. Now, you might think we can just say something like this, hello, and pass a string. But that's not the way Flutter works. If we want to output some text, we need to use a text widget. So we can say text like so, and then put the string of what we want to show as the title inside this text widget. So I'm just going to say my first app. OK. So let's try previewing this. I'm going to save it now and go to run and I'm going to go to hot reload right here or rather hot restart. This one's hot reload. We'll talk more about that later. For now, just click on hot restart. It's a bit like a refresh button for you to see the new screen. So let me press that. And now we can see this app bar at the top. It's all done for us. We didn't have to do any kind of styling or anything like that. It just comes out of the box. We can change the colors and I'm going to show you how to do that later on. But now we can see a pretty decent looking title bar or app bar at the top with a title on it. Now, at the minute, this is left aligned and this is how it looks on Android devices most of the time. So what I'm going to do is use a property called center title to centrally align this. And this we can just set to a Boolean, which is going to be true. So this doesn't have to be a widget. This is just an option, if you like. We're centralizing this. So we set it to true. So if we save that now and then we go to hot refresh or hot restart, then we can see it's now in the center. Cool. So that's our app bar property done. So inside the scaffold now, I'm going to add a second property after the app bar. So let's now, oops, undo that for a start. And let's now go on to the next line after the app bar. And this time we'll do a body property. Now, this property is going to specify what content is going to go inside the body of the screen. So anything under the app bar over here. Now, all I'm going to do is add in a text widget and I'll say hello ninjas. 
Okay, so if I now save this and go down to run and press hot restart, we should see this over here, hello ninjas, okay? So it's quite small, but we'll talk about textiles later on, and it's also in the top left. Now, when we viewed that dummy project, it had the text in the center and it looked a bit better. So now I wanna do the same thing, and the way we do that is we wrap this widget inside a center widget. So I'm gonna actually cut this from here, and instead of directly putting the text inside the body property, I'm gonna do a center widget like so. So a center widget centralizes whatever is nested inside of it. So inside the center widget, we're gonna have a child property. We don't just place in the text like this, we always have to have properties inside widgets. And when we nest something directly inside another widget, it's normally the child property that we use. So we're saying, okay, well the child of this center widget, the thing we're nesting inside it, is now gonna be this text widget. So that means that it's gonna centralize this text widget on the page. So if I save it and go to hot restart, then we should see now that is in the center. Cool. Okay, so let's do one more property inside this scaffold widget. So after the body, we'll come down and we'll do another property called floating action button. And this is basically gonna place us a little floating action button in the bottom right corner. So the value for this property, again, is gonna be a widget. Because like I said, we have widgets as values to properties a lot of the time. So this widget is called the floating action button. Now, just delete that on pressed. We're gonna cover that later. Don't worry about that now. That's how we react to a user pressing this button. But for now, I just want to show you how to get one on the screen. So comma after that then inside the floating action button, again, we have a child property because we're gonna nest another widget inside this widget. The floating action button just gets us the button with nothing inside it, but we want to show text inside it. So we'll say that the text widget is gonna be a child of this. And inside the text widget, we'll just say click. That's what the text is gonna say. So let me save it and then hot restart come over here and we should see now this floating action button with this click message inside it. Now nothing happens when we click on this because we deleted that on pressed property, but we'll talk about that later on. For now, I just wanted to show you how to get up and running with a basic layout like this and how quick that was using this scaffold widget right here. So remember, the scaffold widget is basically like a wrapper to a few different layout widgets, things like the app bar, the body, and also a floating action button, okay? So generally speaking, when we're creating apps, we're gonna be using the scaffold a lot to flesh out the general layout of our apps. But if you wanna read more about it now, then you can go to the scaffold class on the Flutter Docs. I'll leave this link down below so you can go and check it out. And if we scroll down here, it gives you some different examples. It looks very similar to what we've done over there. And if we scroll down even more, then we're gonna see all of the different properties we can add to the scaffold widget. So app bar, we've seen that because I've done that. Background color, body, we've got that. We've also got these others down here. There's loads of different properties, so you can have a play around with those if you want to, but we are gonna explore them more as we go forward as well. This is just an introduction to it.